This is Dr. Nivedita Acharji from Dulgapur Government College, your department, the Department of Chemistry. Today, we will be discussing about carbohydrates. Carbohydrates is included in your UG Semester 4 course and we will be having three lectures in this series. Today is the first lecture on the carbohydrates. In case of carbohydrates, these are the substances which have general formula CX, H2O, whole Y. As you can see, these are referred to as the hydrates of carbon and there are some compounds as well which are exceptions to the formula. For example, if we have formaldehyde or acetic acid, they have the formula CxH2 a whole Y, but these are not the carbohydrates. On the other hand, if we have the ramnose or ramnohexose, then these are actually carbohydrates, but they do not have the formula CxH2 a whole Y. Now carbohydrates, since these are organic compounds, we will be going into a further more detail. The next is the classification of the carbohydrates. As you can see, there are three types of groups of carbohydrates, namely the monosaccharides, the disaccharides, tetrasaccharides and tetrasaccharides are grouped into one group and these are referred to as the oligosaccharides. The third one is what is the polysaccharides. In your syllabus, we have a great detailing on the monosaccharides, but we will be giving a surface uh, view of the oligosaccharides as well as the polysaccharides. In case of oligosaccharides, we will be discussing a brief overview of the sugar, the raffinose uh, to some extent and the maltose. In case of polysaccharides, we will be having a brief overview of what is referred to as the cellulose. Now let us go into a further more detail in case of monosaccharides. As you can see, this is the first reaction I would like to refer to. This is referred to as the kiliani fischer reaction. In this reaction, we have a sugar, as you can see, this is the formula CHO, CHOH, CHOH, CHOH and CH2OH. Suppose we have not uh, understood the classification or the structure and the configuration of carbohydrates. This is uh, one portion of the monosaccharide. We are adding here HCN. What we are doing? We are adding here HCN. With the HCN addition, as for the general example, since it is an aldehyde, we will be having here formation of cyanohydrin. After that, by oxidation with mild oxidation with barium hydroxide as well as some sulfuric acid is also added, the CN is going into the COOH. And then further, this H of the uh, fifth carbon is actually bonded. Here I have shown here fourth but when we will be going a little further we will be finding that this is the fifth carbon uh, grouping uh, with the COOH and giving rise to the ring. In case of five membered ring it is known as furanose and in case of six membered ring it is known as the pyranose system. With this ring structure, we are carrying out a reduction with sodium amalgam and giving rise to another aldehyde. Now what we have done here, we have first of all uh, uh, increased one carbon compared to the previous carbohydrate. Here as you can see in this monosaccharides there are five carbons but here there are six carbons. So this is the kiliani fischer reaction which is referred to as the step up of the monosaccharides. The reason behind explaining this reaction is that it will help you to assess the structure as well as the configuration of the carbohydrates. Before that I would like to discuss what is referred to as aldohexosis and ketohexosis. As you can see this is an aldehyde, this is a CHO group, so this is an aldehyde, so it is known as aldo. If it contains six carbon atoms, it is referred to as a hexose, the five, as you know this is pentose, the four it is tetrose and the three it is triose. 
So, is a carbohydrate, better we can say a monosaccharide, which consists of the gender formula CHO, CHOH, CHOH, and so on, having three carbon atoms, is referred to as allotriose. With the four carbon atoms, it is referred to as the aldotetrose and with the five carbon atoms it is referred to as aldopentose with the six it will be aldohexose now let's build up the structure i have used here the dots for it will be easier for you to understand here you can see this is in this uh, structure i have given here two black dots and this is the structure of d glyceridehyde symbolically which always remember do not write it in your examination script you will have to write the all the structures this is only for your understanding okay now since it is d glyceride remember we will be putting a dot in case of oh and a cho in case of the top dot now if we undergo the skiliani fischer reaction to deglyceraldehyde so what will happen there will be addition of one carbon atom into the uh, this aldohexose when we are adding this uh, carbon atom this will this may give rise to adding of oh to either of the two sides so we are getting d erythrose and d triose from the structure of the d glyceraldehyde now now there are two structures d erythrose and d triose let us to kiliani fischer to these two structures as well now in case of d erythrose this is d ribose and this is d arabinose okay now what we will be doing here and with the trios we are getting d xylose and d lysose so to remember there is a theory that is ring all xylophones loudly always remember we are first adding oh in this convention to the right and then to the left so from d erythrose we are getting d ribose when we are adding one oh at c2 into the right and we are getting the arabinose when we are adding 1c2 to the left similarly in case of d triose we are getting d xylose when we are adding 1oh to the right at c2 as well as d lysose when we are adding this to the right side now one thing to remember why we are and going to uh, this as the d Suppose in stereochemistry you have read when we have OH to the right side it is known as D. But here how you will decide because here this is OH to OH. So for sugars there is a convention always consider the bottom carbon as I have marked down here. So this is D ribose since OH is in the right. D arabinose when OH is also in the right, D xylose also in the right and D lysose also in the right. Okay. Now from D glyceraldehyde we have got what D erythrose and D triose. From erythrose and triose we have got four uh, compounds which is D ribose, D arabinose, D xylose and D lysose. Remember glyceraldehyde is a triose erythrose and triose are tetroses and these five are the pentoses and these are all aldo because they are containing the CHO group okay now from the D ribose we will be giving uh, getting two another one one to the right and another to the left this is allose and altrose next we will be getting this glucose and mannose and then we will be getting this gulose and iodose from the xylose and from D lysose we will be getting galactose and tallose. To remember this all admired good men get into great troubles that is allose, altrose, glucose, mannose, gulose, iodose, galactose and tallose. So, the main thing is that in case of the carbohydrates, we will have to remember up to aldohexoses in this course because in UG semester 4, you have only the structure and configuration of the aldohexoses. 
Now we will be moving into another step up reaction which is given in your Fener book. I have taken it from here as well. This is Sodden and Fischer reaction. This cutting is from the Fener book, I.L. Fener, and you will have to read the book. In case of this Sodden and Fischer reaction, what we are doing is that we are adding here CH3NO2. Remember, you will be adding one carbon, so you will have to add something with the carbon. So we are adding here CH3NO2. With the CH3NO2, this is again, this CH3NO2 is getting minus and it is getting added to the aldehyde. So it is giving rise to CH2NO2 and CHOH. And then after some rearrangement and with acidification with the H2S4, we are getting a step up of the monosaccharide. There is another reaction which is referred to as Sauden and Wolfram reaction. In this reaction, this is the CH2NO2 and CH2OH is added and then with the acidifications, we are getting the compound. Now, after these three compounds, this you will all be getting in the phenol. We will be discussing in detail which is the step down of the monosaccharides and step down of the monosaccharides by whole method as well as by the Ruffs method. In case of Holtz method, we have NH2OH being added, hydroxylamine. With the hydroxylamine, as you know, the CHO is getting converted into an oxine and then by the acidic anhydride with the acidic anhydride, this OH are all converted to OCOCH3 and with the AGOH, this are removed and then we get the step down. Remember, we are removing one carbon atom from this by the help of the Holtz method. In case of Ruffs method, as you can see, this is Br2 H2O. We are giving rise to an oxidation and then we are adding what the Fenton's reagent which is H2O2 uh, with the help of the iron and then with the calcium salt we are getting the removal of the COH and then uh, this is oxidized by the Fenton reagent the CHOH and then we are getting this CHO CHOH whole 3 and CH2OH so always remember in case of step uh, we are giving rise to the we are getting the Kiliani Fischer reaction mainly and in case of step down we can apply both the Holtz method or the Ruffs method. In the next case in your syllabus this is the reaction of glucose with a phenyl hydrocene. With the reaction of glucose and the phenyl hydrocene, first of all, phenyl hydrocene will uh, combine with the aldehyde group to give rise to the hydrozone. With the hydrozone, there is a rearrangement and after this rearrangement, further rearrangement occurs with the addition of another molecule of C6H5NHNH2 which is phenyl hydrocene and we get this compound. Later, we will be learning that one is an osazone and it will be discussed later on. Sometimes in your exam, you may get a question that what is the osazone? or glucose and fructose give rise to osazone. In that case, you will have to write that the reaction of glucose and reaction of fructose both give rise to the same compound and this is osazone. After this one is converted into the uh, aniline gets removed here and then with the further addition uh, we get the osazone. Remember the formation of osazone is very important and it occurs um, very easily in case of the glucose as well as the fructose by the addition of what is known as phenyl hydrocene. In this case the Amadori rearrangement has been shown which occurs in case of this compound. The formation of ozone. Ozone means we will be taking the osazone and then with the help of HCl this is uh, hydrolyzed and we, the resulting compound is referred to as the ozone which is the uh, formation of ozone by the hydrolysis with hydrochloric acid. The next thing which is included in your syllabus is conversion of aldose to ketose. The first step of conversion of an aldose to ketose will be 
initially what you will be doing you will be adding uh, suppose you are told to convert glucose to fructose so what you will be doing you will be taking glucose you will be adding phenyl hydrocene and then you will be showing the formation of the ozone and then by the help of hcl the ozone will be formed after ozone you will be again uh, carrying out reduction by the help of zinc and acetic acid and then it will be giving rise to ch2oh and c double bond o the last portion of this lecture is the conversion of ketose to aldose in this case what you will be doing say this is fructose and you are adding here h2 nickel and then you are uh, carrying out the reduction with the reduction you are giving rise to what is known as with, uh, with uh, this compound which is where all ohs are there and the c double bond o is also reduced and then by the help of nitric acid you undergo oxidation of the upper one and then we will be discussing why this upper one is uh, uh, actually getting oxidized in our next lecture and then there is a for uh, he after heating this is the formation of the glucose so let us summarize what we have read in this lecture the first is what are carbohydrates the next is what are the classification of carbohydrates these are of the three types as you know in case of step up of monosaccharides you will be carrying out the kleene fischer reaction suppose you are told to convert say glucose to uh, say uh, another bigger compound having seven here we have converted the five to the six one so there will be first addition of hcl and then there will be addition of barium hydroxide h2so4 and then with the sodium amalgam then there will be the aldohexoses the structure and composition we have discussed and from triose we are getting two tetroses from the tetrose uh, we are getting four pentoses from the four pentoses we are getting eight hexoses and i have also shown you how to remember the names these are the another two processes which are the step up of the monosaccharides these are the schauden and fischer reaction as well as schauden and wolfhoff reaction the next one was the step down of monosaccharides for example if you were told how to convert uh, uh, the glucose to arabinose glucose have, is having the six carbons and arabinose is having the five carbons so with the six we will be adding here hydroxylamine and then acetic anhydride and with the help of agoh you will be able to get the five similarly you will be getting five to four or four to three and so on in case of step down of monosaccharides there is another process which is referred to as the raffs method now the most important is the reaction of glucose with phenyl hydrocene this occurs by the help of uh, uh, formation of the phenyl hydrosone and then another molecule reacts which gives rise to compound 1 with the rearrangement of the compound 1 we get what is referred to as and the removal of aniline and then again addition of phenyl hydrocene we are getting the osazone reaction similarly by reduction uh, by sorry with the hydrolysis of the osazone we are getting the ozone and if you were told to convert say uh, aldose to ketose then what you will be doing you will be adding simply hcl to this osazone and then carrying out the reduction to give rise to aldose into a ketose the conversion of ketose to aldose is very easy now with the conversion of ketose to aldose what you will be doing you will be carrying out first reduction and then by the help of oxidation and then heating and then reduction so thank you till then we will be discussing the structures have our projections and other chair form of the different glucose structures in our next lecture